The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. My name's Rob McConnell. This is the X Zone, and we're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll free 1 800 610 7035. Email at xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Randy Hoyle, and we're going to be speaking to Randy. Uh, about a number of things, including his very popular blog. Now, Randy was the co-founder of Freedom of Speech Poetry Festival and produced for 11 years. In 2004, wrote The Ballad of Dred Scott, the historical fiction novel about a man who was chosen to uh, be the champion of the universe to bring an end to slavery in America before the Civil War and how his fight for freedom helped Abraham Lincoln become president. The book was recently picked up by Amazon Kindle, and during a promotion sold uh, over 100 copies. And uh, Randy, welcome to the X-Zone. Hey, how are you doing? I'm just doing fine. Uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, I'm a, I've been writing for years, and um, it's very difficult to find markets for writing. I write novellas and poetry, and yeah, mm-hmm. there's just no market for it. So I decided to start doing blogs. And uh, I, I've had a great response. Now, tell me more about the um, Freedom of Speech Poetry Festival that you uh, produced for 11 years. Yeah, what it was, it started out as a slam, a poetry slam. Mm-hmm. And what we would do was have uh, poets read their poetry, and then we would judge them like you would the Olympics with placard cards with the numbers of, of the score. Oh, yeah, right. And, and that was a, you yeah, know, that was great fun. Really enjoyed that, and then it slowly become just a poetry reading, mm-hmm. as well as writing. There's people reading their writing and stating their opinion. We did it around the Fourth of July, and uh, tied it into the celebration of Independence mm-hmm. of America. So, how come it stopped, or is it still going on? I uh, we ran for eleven years, and I just really had done everything I could do with it, and mm-hmm. I gave other people an opportunity to carry it on, and they didn't, so it just sort of died out. That's too bad. It sounds like it was going. To, it was a great. Uh, it was a great event. It was a great concept. Yeah, and, uh, I was very happy with it. Now, how is your your blog writing going? Are you finding blogs are as successful as as actually getting out there with your products? Well. Uh, it's like this. When I would have a poetry reading, there might be 50 to 100 people there. Mm-hmm. Now, with videos, I've had as many as three, 4,000 people view my videos. So it's a much larger audience, and it's worldwide. I have people in Russia see my videos, people in uh, Kenya, uh, people in Brazil, people in Europe, people in Canada. I have a lot of people in Canada look at my videos. And it's a much larger audience, and it's worldwide, and uh, it's very satisfying. Do you make any money at it? Not now. It's possible it could lead to other things. But uh, uh, to me, what I I use it for Mm -hmm. is to express my view of reality. And a blog is so great because you can say, this is my view of reality. If you like it, you can look at it. I'll share it with you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't like it, you can look somewhere else. The Internet is wonderful. I mean, it's wonderful as far as expanding the freedom of the individual. But it's also been wonderful in spreading crap and nonfiction and just blatant lies around the world as well. 
That's true too. Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, it uh, some terrible things yeah. come out of it. Something that's really worrying me right now is uh, the Mayan calendar prophecy. Let's talk about this when we come back from our commercial break, Randy, because I've got to take it right now. Randy Hoyle is our special guest, Exxon Nation, and uh, Randy and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Welcome back, everyone. And Randy Hoyle is my special guest this hour. And if you'd like to uh, find out more about Randy, www.jaxtr.com forward slash Charlie Gorilla. That's www.jaxtr.com forward slash Charlie Gorilla. Um, Randy, what worries you about uh, the end of the Mayan calendar, December the 21st, 2012? Well, it's one of the reasons I started my blog, the, the year 3045 blog. Um, there's so much negativity. Yeah. People uh, saying that they want the world to end, that they'll be glad when the planet is gone because it's such a terrible place. Uh, you've got people, you, there's there's uh, videos on there stating that the planet might be hit by another planet, the moon might be hit by another planet, some terrible disaster, and there's always disaster. You, you know, let, let, you know, you you hit on something that that I have always believed in my heart of heart was the reason why doomsday prophecies always get so much popularity because people are so damn lazy they don't want to take time to correct the situation that we find ourselves in today in the world that is a lot easier if we were just to be schmucked away and bang that's the end of it. Yeah, they just I, I can't. For me personally, I can't see being so down that I just wish the yeah. whole world would end. You know what, Randy? And that I like the way, me. You know what, Randy? I like the way you think. 
I like the way you think. Thank you. you know, and, and I can understand why you're so popular. And you, people who, who are just doom and gloom, I, I'd like to put them on a spacecraft, aim for nowhere, and push. <laughs> well, in my blog, I talk about where criminals are sent off world. Mm-hmm. Uh, people, people who want to create wars, religious wars, yeah. terrorism, uh, they don't kill them anymore. They just send them to another planet. So, uh, yeah, I have to agree with you. There's sometimes I would like to get rid of them, but you, you, know, you have to learn to live with people. That's, that's right. That's why I, I you, know, you know what? It seems that the majority of the problems that we face in today's world is because we don't take the time to understand other people, to to take a look at their cultures, to take a look at their philosophies and their religion. Is, is it so... People who come with this this pompous attitude that they're right, you're wrong, that it's, we're the ones who started everything, our God is the best God, our this, our that... These people, let's put them on board with your criminals and shoot them up into space somewhere. Well, no, no I think they, I think um, I think it's a matter of violence. I think to some degree you have to deal with them, but when, but when they cross the line right. and actually try to create violence, then I, I could see something being done with them other than killing them, maybe moving them somewhere where the rest of us are safe from them. You know, I was speaking to my mom earlier today. She lives in Montreal with my dad. And they were telling me about a group of students. And now in Quebec, the students are are upset because the government is planning on raising tuitions to school. Well, you know, this has got to be done in order to maintain a higher standard of ed- education as far as I'm concerned. So yeah. what the students did is that they uh, were able to... I'm, I'm I'm trying to phrase this very carefully. They 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 planned an attack on the Montreal metro system, subway system, yeah. using smoke bombs that shut the entire underground communi- uh, transportation system right down, causing a total gridlock of traffic above. Yeah. Now, to me. This is ridiculous. And then for people to see what's, you know, you, you, people think that, oh, this would never happen in Canada. This would never happen in the United States. That This happens in China. This happens in Britain. But you know what? It happens right on our very own doorsteps. Well, my, my concern is that under times of stress, mm-hmm. people use it as an excuse to do bad things. And yep. there are people out there capable of hurting themselves and hurting you. And there was a 1997 event, the Hellbach Comet. Yes, I remember that very well with uh, with Heaven's Gate. Yes, it was a UFO cult, and they believe by killing themselves, they're going to beam up to mm. a UFO and fly away. And 30 of them committed suicide. Yep. And uh, uh, there is a, a wacko factor out there. People do some terrible things, and... I plan on December 21st. I intend to stay home with my groceries and wait till de- December 22nd. And I just, exactly. I just, I just wish other people would think in terms of that maybe there will be a December 22nd, maybe there will, will be a future, and not do anything they will regret. You know, when, when talking about Hale Bop and Heaven's Gate, I believe that the 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 blame for what happened to to the uh, the Heaven's Gate crew should actually be put on a, a member of the media who went out of his way to to promote the fact that behind Hale Bop there was a UFO without any without any evidence whatsoever you know it was a great story so let's let's do it I think the media today has got to take more responsibility for its actions yeah. I- Sometimes when you overdo something, you, mm-hmm. you can blow things out of proportion. And, uh, sometimes it happens, yes. Now, why did you start talking about UFOs on your blog, Randy? I noticed that uh, people were interested in it. I would mm-hmm. get more views when I did that. And I did some research and found that it is a very popular subject on YouTube. So I decided to do a report where I just actually told people where they could find videos of UFO videos on YouTube, mm-hmm. and then I decided to uh, start doing predictions, and I did some research on it, and 
and I found out that during certain hol- during holidays there was a tendency for more UFOs to be seen or to be posted on YouTube. Any idea why? I, uh, I think it's because people have more free time, more mm-hmm. time to be outside and see the world around them. I think I, I think UFOs are prevalent. That that phenomenon happens a lot, and during those holidays, people have more time to see it. So, so what, Randy? What do you think UFOs actually are? I have no idea exactly what they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I think some of them are actually some kind of a life form we haven't discovered yet. I mean, we're always finding new animals, new species. Mm-hmm. And I believe this could be, some of it could be actually a life form. From looking at the videos I see on YouTube, some of them are actually, they're fake. People are taking advantage of people. Some of them are percentage. I'm afraid maybe our own government's spying on us. The technology is there. Police departments are starting to use drones to uh, watch criminal activity. Mm-hmm. And the technology, our government has the technology to spy on us using drones. And some of the UFOs I've seen on YouTube have their parents and the movement of drones. Why do you think the government is reverting to the use of drones to spy on their own citizens? I think the rationale is that they're protecting us. But, you know, it's just a possibility. Uh, it's just a possibility that it is going on. Hmm. Some degree. So, what are some of your latest predictions? Well, I predicted in Brazil during the 47 days of holiday before Easter that there would be UFO seen in Brazil, and there were three that I noted. Mm-hmm. One was called uh, Sky uh, see, Spaceball Crashes, and uh, that was also on YouTube. And there was um, uh, a V-shaped type UFO is seen as well. All you have to, all you have to do to find it on YouTube is search uh, UFO Brazil uh, April or March 2012, and you'll find them. Why? Why do you think and the UFOs are so interested in Brazil? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. It makes no sense to me. No, no, but I, I, but again, I think it's a phenomenon that happens a lot. And I think during certain holidays, people mm-hmm. have more time to see it. Do you think there's a connection, Randy, between the the UFO phenomenon and various religious philosophies? No, I don't. I really, I really don't. Uh-huh. I, I think the fact that a lot of the holidays are religious is just the fact that that's when people have holidays because they're traditional. And and while they're celebrating those holidays, they have time to see what's going on in the sky. And that uh, creates a situation where people can see more of what's going on. And that, that, that's my belief. So they become sky watchers like the ancients? Yes. Exonation Randy Hoyle is my special guest of this hour. Randy's website is www.jaxtr.com forward slash Charlie Gorilla. That's www.jaxtr.com forward slash Charlie Gorilla. Hmm. What are your What are your outlook on other aspects of the paranormal, Randy? Uh, for example, Bigfoot. What's your take on Bigfoot? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I've seen some of the videos. Mm-hmm. And, uh, again, you know, there's species of animals that we're discovering every day. Scientists are discovering, and um, it wouldn't surprise me if there was something like that. Also on the on YouTube and other video sites, including Vimo, uh, are a lot of videos about ghosts and hauntings. And um, do you believe in ghosts? Are they are they real? And how many of the videos that you've seen on YouTube are, in your opinion, real compared to false? Give me a percentage. Maybe 50%. So we're looking um, at a 50-50, right? I think it's 50-50. Yeah. I've seen some... I believe that ghosts are basically probably energy, that there's certain energy fields yeah. out there, and, uh, and that's what people are seeing. Hey, Randy, Whether- I hate to do this, buddy. You and I have to take our commercial break with the news at the bottom of the hour. Great having you. Thank you very much for sharing your time with us today here on The Exxon, Randy. We'll be back after this commercial break with my guest of this hour, Randy Hoyle. Here's his website, www.jax.com. 
jackstr.com forward slash Charlie Gorilla. That's jackstr.com forward slash Charlie Gorilla. Randy Hoyle and I return on the other side of this commercial break with the news. So whatever you do, don't go away. We'll be back. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Worldwide Toll Free, this is the X-Zone. My name is Rob McConnell, and my guest this hour is Randy Hoyle. Randy's website is www.jaxtr.com forward slash Charlie Gorilla. What are some of the other topics that you touch on your very popular uh, blog site? Well, basically, uh, I just tell news of the future. I want to project a future, a great future, to contradict the doomsayers. And uh, I talk about thorium reactors to replace uh, radium, Mm -hmm. uh, radium or uh, plutonium reactors as being safer in the future. I talk about green technology, uh, how it started in the 21st century and how it's very popular in the 31st century and how it led to terraforming on other planets. And uh, I talk about six-mile-high towers, so high on the Earth that when you take an elevator to the top, you can see the curvature of the Mm, Earth. I talk about space elevators as envisioned by Arthur C. Clarke existing in the 31st century. I talk about cars that hover and houses that float in the air because the graviton particle as predicted in string theory has been discovered and they've learned how to manipulate it. That's the sort of thing I talk about. What is the, the uh, is there one topic that your readers really, really get into? No, not particularly. Um, it just seems that um, They, they they like to talk about the future a great deal. They like mm-hmm. the fact that I that I promote the future, and uh, that that seems to be what they like to talk about. How do they see the future? Do they see the future through your eyes? Do they they do they write back and some say this is how them, I see? A lot of them do. A lot mm-hmm. of them agree with my point of view, but some of them are very negative. Again, like I said, I've had some people comment that. Uh, They'll be glad when this planet is gone. And and, and uh, I try to ignore that. I have to ignore it because negativity just yeah. tears me apart uh, when I'm trying to do something positive. So I just try to, you know, concentrate on uh, seeing a, a great future, projecting science and technology mm-hmm. into the future, and believing that, that you can have a future if you're willing to work for your dream and fight for your future. In, in your future, describe the government to me, as, as you see it. The government is a mixed economy. Capitalism, businesses, and industries are very welcome. They're given the freedom to produce. But the idea that a business would ever pollute is something that just doesn't happen. Uh, children have been taught that they 
advancements of technology and science that can create industry and manufacturing that doesn't pollute. And that's what they've created. And and um, it's pretty much a free government, but it is mixed. It is mixed. Uh, uh, there is some help for education. Do you think we're we're at the point of no return when it comes to the environment of this planet? No, I do not. I believe there can be some great things to, tr- to turn it around. Green technology, and the key to selling green technology. I believe, and that I point out in my videos, Mm -hmm. is if you can sell somebody something that's green, that's going to help the environment, but also saves the user money, that it benefits the user, then you can sell it. And that's the key to selling green concepts. In your future, are we going to be depending on fossil fuel as we do today? No. No, um... I, I believe that uh, there will be thorium reactors that will mm-hmm. create a lot of energy. Uh, I believe there will be uh, cars that can create uh, water into electricity directly by turning it into hydrogen. Uh, I believe it will. I believe I believe fossil fuels will eventually run out and become mm-hmm. so expensive that they have to be replaced with other things. Why do you think in today's society, with all the all the experts we have, all the scientists that we have, you know, if we're able to put a robot on Mars, how come we're not able to find alternative fuel to, to number one, save the economy, and number two, save the planet? Well, a lot of it has to do with getting people used to the, uh, to the idea. Right now, batteries and electric cars mm-hmm. are so expensive. That, that, that it makes it difficult to sell them. But I was reading an article the other day about a business that has that is creating batteries that are half the price of the batteries they use now, and they even last longer. And I believe the, that development in that field will lead to cleaner energy. Wow, we can and only hope. Energy. But when we watch the the television series that depict the 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 damage that the that is happening in our polar regions, for example, where yeah. the ice flows are depleting, that even the the uh, the polar bears aren't able to survive, and there's new species of animals and new mammals that are going up to this area that are not indigenous to it. What do we do about this? What do we do about this this never ending change? I, I don't think there's anything you can do about it. The, to some degree, the change is going to happen, mm-hmm. and animals are going to adjust. And all you have to do, all you can do, is just sort of work with it. Um, yeah, you know, I, I really don't know what you can do about it. I mean, seriously, uh, animals will mm-hmm. adjust to the environment that they're in, and that's what is happening. The environment is changing, and the animals are adjusting to that environment. And uh, humans are, are going to have to adjust as well. If, if uh, more isn't done about climate change, uh, uh, humans may find themselves having to stay indoors more. They may have to find themselves living in malls, have a, living in apartments in malls where the air is filtered and cool. I mean, um, it doesn't look too good. Mm. In, in your world of the future, as you see it, Randy, what about the military? How do they? What part do they play in the future? Well, in, in my video blog, the year thirty forty five, mm-hmm. I envision the military as using as using tools to deal with warring nations. If a country tries to start war, it's quarantined by the military. Their electricity is shut off. Their water is shut off. Uh, all modern conveniences are shut off, and they're sent back into the fourteenth century. As far as technology is concerned, and if that doesn't sat- if that doesn't calm them down, then the military uses robots. Uh, human personnel aren't sent in unless it's needed to bring people out who want to leave, and uh, they don't play games with these countries. They quarantine them and shut them down, and and they don't play games with them. Hmm. And is education in your future very? Does does education play a major role? In, in the success of the continuance of this planet? 
yes, education. Uh, we need more engineers and technicians now, and, and education plays a major role. Without education, it, well, if you have a factory and you go into a town where no one knows how to operate the machinery, without education to teach people how to do it, what, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. If people can't use math skills, how can they work in your factories? How can they come up with new concepts? People have to be educated. Do you think that that very lack of education, as you just described it, in this day and age is, is holding us back from a technological progression? I do believe that a lack of education is interfering uh, with, with the natural progression of technology and science. I do believe that if we had more funding into education, I believe mm-hmm. the world would be a better place. How about religion? Where does religion sit in the future, in your future, as as you see it? In the future, there will be many, many different religions. Uh, the Abrahamic type religions will still exist, mm-hmm. but I, I believe you're going to see many philosophies and combinations of religion and philosophies. I foresee a religion that I refer to as universalism, where it is believed that God is the universe and the universe is God, and the attributes given to God are actually attributes attributes to the uh, the universe, and that um, the way to understand God is through reason Mm -hmm. and logic. How about agriculture? We're going to have to need. We're going to need more food. There's going to be more people. But I, I believe we're going to see farming actually uh, in space around us. I believe there's going to be places where they grow crops and use space elevators to ship them down. And uh, you could actually be eating uh, carrots that are grown in orbit around the Earth. Wow. You know that makes a lot of sense. And so does so does solar energy. You know, like we've got the technology. Why don't we use it? We're, well, we're just the, discover- the price is coming down. The price of panels are, is coming down. It's becoming mm-hmm. cheaper to create solar energy, and uh, I believe it's going to be a boom for green energy. Do you think that there are those companies out there, like the like uh, the major? hydroelectric companies and, and the Fords and the GMs and, and the, the gas companies that are actually holding in the reins of progress so they can fill their pockets? Hmm. No, I believe there's a lot of fear about mm-hmm. the future, a fear about new ideas. And they test the market to see. They test the market to see if what they, want, they have to offer will sell. Uh, Duke Power is big here where I live, and they're, they ha- actually have built a solar energy field uh, north of us, mm-hmm. and, and uh, they're actually developing solar energy uh, as a supplement to uh, coal. That makes sense. Now, now in the in the future, as you see it, what about medical attention, uh, the the medical profession? How is that going to change? I believe you're going to see more technologies like nanobots that are used to go into the body to do mm-hmm. repairs. I believe you're going to see uh, cloning. I believe cloning is going to exist. Uh, I believe that uh, cloning will be not only legal, but socially accessible. It's not, not only for reproduction, but to mm-hmm. extend your life. And uh, I believe you're going to see new new technology like uh, clothing you can wear that monitors your body while you're wearing it. Uh, I I think it's going to be very expensive. Hmm. So the future isn't doom and gloom. It's actually a very bright future. I think it's a wonderful future. And but the key is to work to make it real. And the key is to work to make your dreams reality. Just set it on your butt, mm. and dreaming does no good. You have to make an effort. Yes. You have to sweat a little bit. Yep. The universe rewards effort. 
My definition of a dream, uh, in, in when people ask me the difference between a dream and reality, it's very simple. It's doing it. The dream is the idea. The sweat, the labor, the belief, the work that goes into the dream is the reality. Yes. You know, that is the reality. It's, it's a very simple formula, and yet so many people just don't get it. Well... It's just easier to sit on your butt uh, and, and, and complain. You know, all oh, this is terrible. Uh, but if you have a dream, why not work to make it reality? Um, there was a woman who said that anyone who fights for the future loses today. And I think people should work, work and fight for their futures to turn them into reality. Couldn't agree with you more. I just couldn't agree with you more. Are you a Civil War buff? Well, my, the Battle of Dred Scott deals with the Civil War, the, the cause of the Civil War. My book, my book. Yeah. And do, do you have an interest in, in, in President Lincoln and what he stood for and, and where, where he sat during the entire Civil War scenario? Well, while I wrote the book, I had to research it for a year. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm very happy with Lincoln as he, he you know, he grew. Yes. His first attitude was uh, you had to free the slaves and send them somewhere else. And then for people interacting with him, he just he changed and said, yes, you have to free them. And um, I'm very happy with what he did. I, I, uh, I don't think he did it all by himself. He had help. Mm-hmm. But, um, yes, I, I think that's a very interesting point in history uh, the Lincoln years. All right, stand by, Randy. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exonation Randy Hoyle is my guest. Great chat with Randy. I, I love his world of the future, and I agree with him that the only difference between a dream and reality is just doing it. Get off your butts. Be proactive. Just don't be an armchair quarterback or an armchair politician. You can make a difference, but oh my goodness, what's this? It's going to take work and effort. Uh, what's this world coming to? This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN TV. For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world.
Welcome back, everyone. Randy Hoyle is my special guest, and uh, Randy is the author of The Ballad of Dred Scott. He's also the former uh, co-founder of the Freedom of Speech Poetry Festival. And uh, we're talking to Randy about his blog uh, and how he foresees the future. And Randy, how do you see the family of the future? <laughs> I'm going to make somebody angry at me now. I, I believe you're going to have the nuclear family, uh, yeah. a great deal of that. But I believe you're going to see more con contractual marriages, mm -hmm. which, which could be, uh, according to Robert Heinlein, who I read a great deal of, he's a science fiction writer, could consist of two wives, three husbands, three, two husbands, three wives. Uh, I believe, I, I believe you're going to see more freedom in that range. Oh and, my lord! I have enough problems with one wife. Why would I ever want more than one? Well, well, within <laughs> within a, a, a marriage, there's certain things that people fulfill within a marriage, uh -huh. and 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 uh, people, you know, people could. And I believe in the future, we'll, through contracts, actually have families, uh, large, you know, families that can actually have more than one wife or more than one husband. And I believe it's very possible. Tell me, would you like more than one wife? No. Nope. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> um, your your book, The Ballad of Dred Scott, is it still available for for people for people to buy? Yeah. Yeah, it's available on Amazon and other places. Uh, Excellent. You go to Amazon and check out Randy Hall, The Ballad of Dred Scott, and uh, you'll find it. It's available in paperback and on on Kindle as well. Um, uh, it's really a good read, but it's a novella. It's not going to take you several weeks to read it. It's really a, a two-nighter is what it is, or a one-nighter, depending on how fast you read. And mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, it's yeah, it's still available on Amazon. Randy, we've got about a minute left. What message would you like to leave with the listening audience of the Exxon tonight? I would like to say that remember that sometimes even when you lose, you can still win if you don't give up your dreams, so keep fighting. And remember what the Dormouth said, feed your head. And now it's a wonderland, the Dormouth said, feed your head. Read a book, learn something new. And remember that the universe loves you, or this part talking to you right now loves you, and may the universe bless you. Randy, quickly, let our listeners know how they can find out more about you. Uh, you can basically go on the Internet and search Google and search Randy Hall, by the Dred Scott, or Randy Hall, a year 3045. It's and the, you can find, there, there's tons. It's that simple. Randy, I want to thank you so much for joining us. We'll have to have you back on. I fully enjoyed this hour, sir. Uh, I enjoyed it. Thank you. You take care of yourself, Randy. Thank you. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Exo Nation, Bye -bye. Randy Hoyle has been my guest this hour. And if you'd like to find out more about Randy, like you said, just go to Google or any other search engine. Type in Randy Hoyle. That's Randy, H-O-Y-L-E. Or you can visit his website at J-A-X-T-R dot com forward slash Charlie Gorilla. I'll be back on the other side of the news at six and a half minutes past the hour as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Once again, the Body, Soul, Spirit Expo. May 25th to the May 27th at the International Center, 6900 Airport Road in Mississauga, Ontario, right across from Pearson International Airport. If you'd like more information, it's really simple explanation. Go to www.bodysoulspiritexpo.com. We'll be back after the news and a break at six and a half minutes past. <laughs> 